Hello everyone and welcome to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be on splitting the database. Now up to this particular point, we've put, been putting our database file on one single computer. And that's perfectly fine if only one person is ever going to need access to the file. But most of you probably work in some sort of office or network environment where you've got multiple workstations out there. And you've really probably been designing this database in order to be viewable by other people in your office. But this kind of poses a problem because obviously they may be working on it simultaneously. You can't just have one single file and just keep copying it and moving it from PC to PC. You need to create some sort of relationship that allows your data to be accessible from all of these other workstations. So this scenario, this networking situation here is often called a server to client relationship where you have one single host computer that is serving the data while your clients are accessing that data through some sort of uh, some sort of software on their local PC. And that local PC has permissions set up in order to to gain access to the, the data that's being hosted by the server. So this is exactly what we're going to go ahead and do with our access database. And it starts out with our current database file, which is just a single file. And we're going to need to actually split our file up into two separate files. In one file, we're going to put all of our tables, which houses all of the data. Then in another file, we're going to put our forms, our reports, and our queries as well as the VBA code that supports those things. So again, we're splitting our database into two separate database files. One file contains the tables, another one contains the forms, reports, queries, and VBA code. This is called, these are called our backend and frontend files. The backend holds the tables, or our data, and our frontend cont contains the user interface, which is our forms, reports, queries, and VBA code, okay? You've probably heard those terms before. Backend, which is our data. You've probably heard data or server. And then on the front end, we have a UI or user interface that the user actually utilizes, okay? So once you've got the database split up into our backend and front end, you're gonna put the backend on the server and you're gonna distribute the front end to all of the different workstations out on your network, all right? So that is what we're gonna go ahead and work on today. Now, I've got my database here with all of the tables, queries, forms, reports, and modules all in one service inc.acdb file. And I'm going to need to split that up. But before I can even do that, I need to set up some permissions for access to those files before they're even created. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my computer and go to my C drive. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder database. You can call it whatever you'd like. Now, you also need to make sure that if you are in one of these network scenarios, that you have full permission in order to do this. You may need to contact your domain administrator to see what kind of access you have, and you may have to work with them in order to get your back end available out on maybe some other server that's going to be hosting the file. You know, perhaps there's one specific file uh, server location that's out on the network somewhere, and you need to let them know that you're, go you're planning on putting your back end into a folder out there on that server. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and use my local PC as the server. So I'm going to create this database folder, and then I'm going to right click on it and go to properties. Now under the properties here, there's a sharing tab. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the advanced sharing. You may not have the option to share just yet, and there are a series of steps that you can go through in order to turn this on. Uh, and I suggest that at this time, if you don't see this advanced sharing button, go ahead and stop the video here and go to Bing and try to see if you can search for how to turn on advanced sharing for Windows 7 or higher. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've got, uh, got advanced sharing turned on, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the button. And I'm going to click on share this folder. I'm going to go ahead and leave the, the, sh the share name database so that it's easy for me to remember. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the permissions button. And right now, everyone just has read access. And that's okay, but there's a problem. If I'm going to put my backend, my backend file, and make it available for others to 
write data to, they're going to need to be able to have more controls than this. So I'm going to go ahead and allow full control for everyone. I'm going to go ahead and apply that and apply my shared folder and go ahead and close out. So now my database folder that I created is now in a state of shared. And I could just double check this by going and hitting backslash backslash my computer name, which is just steves-pc. And you'll see that there's that database folder of, that's made available. And right now there's nothing in it. Anyone else on the network should be able to see the same folder now using this same address up in their address bar. It's backslash backslash your computer name backslash and then whatever the shared folder name is. All right. So I've got my shared folder already set up and everyone has access to it. You may want to go through and consider strongly who has permissions. Right now I've set up everybody. Uh, oops. Right now I have everybody that's made available to this database folder, but you may want to go into these uh, into the um, into the permissions here and add different users. Maybe you want to add just your boss or just you or whoever is all going to need access to this folder and set them up. But just make sure that they have full control. Okay, so that's all done. We've got our folder all created. So now it's time to split up our database. Now I could go into our, our database folder here and I could create a new Microsoft Access database and then just export these tables one at a time to that database. But Microsoft has given us a little wizard to do this for us. And I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking on the database tab, there, the database tools tab, and under move data there is access database. So if I click on this, I'm going to go ahead and click on split database. You're welcome to read that text if you want to, but it's kind of unnecessary. Um, and now I'm going to go to my C drive, hit database, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. But I'm going to make sure that the file name has this underscore back end or B E, uh, you know, B E underscore B E is, uh, is added to the service Inc. And that stands for back end. Okay, so this is going to be one file that is going to be stored on our database folder that is going to be the back end. So we're going to go ahead and click on the split button and you can see access is world away here. It says database successfully split. I click OK. And if you look over here now, our tables have this blue arrow pointing next to them. And when I hover the mouse over each one of these tables, you can see underneath is the file location C colon backslash database backslash service inc underscore be dot accdb. Now, there's a problem. Not everyone is going to have this c colon backslash database backslash service inc underscore be because this is my local drive. Okay, this is now pointing the table to my local drive uh, to get access to that file. But other computers out on the network will not be able to see this file. Okay, so I need to make this file, uh, I need to relink all of these tables using my network share rather than the actual local location. And there is a way to do that. But just before I do that, I just want to show you that my service inc underscore be file is located in my c colon backslash folder. But it is also available now if I do backslash backslash steves dash pc, oops dash pc backslash database. If I go there, you can see there's the same file. Okay. And if I just click on this, you can see steves dash pc backslash database. I'm going to go ahead and copy this location because it's going to help me in just a moment. I'm going to go to external data and you'll see there's this button for linked table manager. I'm going to select on this. And you'll see here is a list of all of the linked tables that are in my database. You can see right now all of my linked tables are pointing to the C colon backslash database backslash service inc underscore be. So I'm going to go ahead and select all. I'm going to take all of these tables and I'm going to tell it to prompt me for a new location of where to find these tables. Then when I click on the OK button, it's going to ask me for where is the new location of that table. And I'm going to go ahead and 
go to that folder location that's out on the network, backslash, backslash, Steve's PC. And there is our file. So again, backslash, backslash, your computer name, backslash, your, your shared folder name, and then select the file, the backend file. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Access is world away. All s selected link tables are successfully refreshed. Click OK, and you can see now that the folder, uh, that the file location is that backslash, backslash, uh, computer name and folder location. Okay, so that's what we want to see. We want to see that shared name uh, for the location of where all these linked tables are. Now, if I click close, you'll see I can do I can double click on these and I can open these up. All of these tables are available to me, even though they no longer reside in my Service Inc. file. I'm actually accessing them through this file that sits here out on my uh, on my shared folder, and I can prove that to you by if I just open up one of these, okay, I've got a table open, you'll see that this LACCDB file opens up, which means that there's currently somebody accessing this ACCDB file, okay? That's what this LACCDB file is doing. It's keeping track of all of the modifications and changes that are being made to this file. And it also makes it so that there's a bit of a problem for the next step, all right? So I've got my database successfully split up. I've got my back-end database file here. But what about the front-end? What about my queries, forms, reports, and modules? Right now, they're sitting out here on my, uh, if I go here to my documents here, I've got my database file that I've been working on here with Service Inc. And you can see there's that LC, LACCDB file, OK? And while it's open, while this LACCDB file is currently uh, operating on my Service Inc. and I've got it open, no one else can access this file. Okay? And that's going to be a problem later. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on File. I'm going to go to Save As. I'm going to save my database as. And I'm going to go to that uh, database folder. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. But this time, I'm going to name it with underscore FE, which stands for front end. Okay, so now I've got my back end and my front end are both being worked on here on uh, in this shared folder. Okay, so back end and front end. And you can see there's that LACCDB file. Now, if anyone else tries to double click and open up this front end file, they're going to get a permission issue, even if they have full permissions to the file. You can only have one person accessing this front end file at a time, and that's going to cause some problems. Um, let me go ahead and click on Enable Content. This is just basically giving me a security warning that I've got these uh, modules with code in the background, and you'll get that from time to time. Uh, so don't worry about it. Just make sure that everybody knows to go ahead and enable that. OK, so how do we resolve this? Well. I'm going to go ahead and close this down for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on my front end file. I'm going to go to the properties, go to security, and then under the advanced options here, I'm going to click on advanced. And right now, it's kind of disabled right now. It says include inheritable permissions from this object's parent which means that this file, my front end file, has the same permissions on it as the folder that it's ho that's holding the file. So all those permissions that I set up for all the users in my database folder, they also apply to this file. And I want to change that. So I'm going to go to Change Permissions, and I'm going to uncheck the Include Inheritable Permissions. I'm going to go ahead and, yes, I do want to remove. And now, no one has access to the file. Okay, Literally, no one has permission to the file. So I'm going to click Add now, and I'm going to add users. Now, again, you're going to want to, if, if you're in a domain environment where you have an administrator, you're probably going to want to talk to them about who you're going to want to give access to this folder. And these, this users uh, group 
comes from your domain controller or your Active Directory. So you're going to want to talk to your administrator and find out what the group names are that you should be giving permission to. Uh, okay, and again, this is just your front end. Your back end is still going to be made available to everyone. So with the front end, though, we're going to want to just do users for right now, which is a special group for Windows 7, uh, which is, is basically anybody who's authenticated, any, anyone who's logged into this local computer. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and allow full control and click OK and apply. And we'll exit out of that. Now, right now, again, we've basically given everybody full control over the front end, and we need to change that. I'm going to open this one more time and go to Properties again. And under the Security tab, now I can use a little bit of a simpler method here. I don't need to go into the Advanced anymore. I could just click on Edit for my User Group. Okay, So hit Edit. And now I'm going to drop the full control. I'm going to drop Modify. I'm going to drop read and execute, and I'm just going to leave checked only this read option. So the only thing that they can do is read the file. I'm going to go ahead and click apply and OK. And now if I try to open up the file, you'll see that it only allows me to open this and read it. OK, I can only read it. I'm going to go ahead and enable the contact. Uh, Oh, won't let me yet until I save it. Okay, so now you can see that they're getting this option that says Save As. So now I can click Save As. It'll get a little warning. That's per that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and go to my desktop and save it. Enable the content. And now I have my own working version with full permission and full access to this front end database. While at the same time, my database file, you'll see my front end does not have the LCCD AB file. Uh, it's just my back end file. So this file here is basically locked. No one is going to be able to open it and access it. They're going to be prompted to save it because it's only going to open up in read only. Okay, so that's just one nifty little way of handling that. Probably the most popular solution to this particular problem is to create a batch file that actually copies this front end uh, file to their local C drive and then opens it for them. I'm not going to take you through all the steps in order to do that. You can probably just go to Bing and do a search on how to distribute uh, access front ends and you'll see that there's probably already batch files created that you can just copy and mo modify a little bit. You can also talk to your domain administrator and see if uh, he has a better solution for copying these. You can actually use uh, home directories and such, of th you know, certain things like that in order to uh, grant permissions to that front end file. But anyway, that is how you break up, that's how you split up your database into a back end and front end file and a way for you to make that back end and front end available to your users while still allowing for full uh, full working versions of the database file. Okay, If you have any questions, feel free to plop them in the comments section below. I know this is a pretty complex scenario, and I'm sure lots of you will have questions. I'll be sure to answer them as best as I can.